Welcome back to the channel. My name is Thomas Fletcher and I'm the host of the LCSW Network. If you're new to the channel, please do me a favor by smashing that like button, by subscribing to the channel, and by sharing this video with your social work colleagues and friends. The purpose of this channel is to create a community of hope and support where social workers can come for relevant news, information, and inspiration. Welcome back to Self Care Saturday. Welcome back to week 50 of our 2021 Wellness Challenge series. If you are new to this channel, I would like to invite you to watch the previous 49 videos where we've discussed self-care topics that LCSWs and other licensed mental health clinicians can use to sustain ourselves while we are providing excellent care for our clients. For today's topic, we will be discussing the ethics of self-care. Back in September of 2020, I was invited by the National Guard Behavioral Health Training event to present at their annual conference. One of the two lectures that I presented was called Self-Care and Wellness, A Call to Heal Thyself. It was this presentation that inspired me to launch my first YouTube channel, which is the LCSW Network, with a regular show called Self-Care Saturday that focuses on self-care for LCSWs and other licensed mental health professionals. The three learning objectives of my presentation were the following. Number one, identify professional ethical obligations of self-care and wellness. Number two, identify, define, and understand the common threats to the wellness of behavioral health professionals. And number three, identify and begin to incorporate tools for professional self-care and wellness. Why was this topic important, especially in 2020? My reasoning was that as behavioral health professionals, both in the military and in the civilian world, we are routinely putting our wellness on the lines in service and support to our clients, families, friends, and society at large. As the world has continued to experience the many psychosocial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, the role of behavioral health professionals has become ever more essential in supporting the wellness of those most heavily impacted by the pandemic. The thesis of my presentation was that as behavioral health professionals, we are ethically and legally obligated by our professional associations and state boards to practice in a manner that is safe, effective, and beneficial to our clients and society at large. Anything that jeopardizes our ability to provide safe, effective and beneficial behavioral health services to our clients and societies un is unethical and potentially illegal. I also propose that there are common threats to the wellness of behavioral health professionals that we need to be vigilant of and address when they present themselves. The first professional code of ethics that I reviewed in the presentation was the National Association of Social Workers Code of Ethics the ethical values that are listed in this code of ethics are the following. Service, social justice, dignity and worth of the person, importance of human relationships, integrity, and competence. The ethical principles related to these ethical values are the following. Social workers' primary goal is to help people in need and to address social problems, and this is related to service. Social workers challenge social injustice, and this is related to social justice. Social workers respect the in inherent dignity and worth of the person. Social workers recognize the central importance of human relationships. Social workers behave in a trustworthy manner. Social workers practice within their areas of competence and develop and enhance their professional expertise. The ethical standards that are relevant to the professional activities of all social workers are the following. Ethical responsibilities to our clients, ethical responsibilities to our colleagues, ethical responsibilities to the practice setting, ethical responsibilities to ourselves as professionals, ethical responsibilities to the social work profession, and ethical responsibilities to the society. 
the ethical value and principle that I, I, that I identified in my presentation as paramount to making the case that self-care self -care is an ethical obligation is, are the following. Integrity, which is a value, and social workers behave in a trustworthy manner. That's the principle. Um, social workers are continually aware of the profession's mission, values, ethical principles, ethical standards, and practice in a manner consistent with them. Social workers act honestly and responsibly and promote ethical practices on the part of the organizations with which they are affiliated. The ethical responsibilities that I identified as critical to my thesis are as follows. 4.05 impairment, and this is under social workers' ethical responsibilities as professionals. Section A. Social workers should not allow their own personal problems, psychosocial distress, legal problems, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties to in interfere with their professional judgment and performance, or to jeopardize the best interests of people for whom they have a professional responsibility. Section B, social workers whose personal problems, psychosocial distress, legal problems, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties interfere that interfere with their professional judgment and performance should immediately seek consultation and take appropriate remedial action by seeking professional help, making adjustments in workload, terminating practice, or taking any other steps necessary to protect clients and others. The next ethical responsibility that I, that I identified in the presentation is 2.08, impairment of colleagues. And this is also under social work ethical responsibilities to colleagues. Section A, social workers who have direct knowledge of a social work colleague's impairment that is due to personal problems, psychosocial distress, substance abuse, or mental health difficulties, and that interfere with practice effectiveness, should consult with that colleague when feasible and assist the colleague in taking remedial action. Section B, social workers who believe that a social work colleague's impairment interferes with practice effectiveness and that the colleague has not taken, has not taken adequate steps to address the impairment should take action through appropriate channels established by employers, agencies, NESW, licensing, and regulatory bodies and other professional organizations. In the presentation, I also presented the Code of Ethics from the American Psychological Association and from the American Psychiatric Association to further validate my thesis that professional self-care is an ethical and legal obligation. For the purposes of this video and later on the book, I will not add them here, but make mention that both the American Psychological Association, Ethical Principles of Psychologists and Code of Conduct, uh, published in 2017, and the American Psychiatric Association, The Principles of Medical Ethics, published in 2013, outline ethical principles and standards that obligate psych professionals self-care for their respective so let's talk about the common threats to behavioral health professionals' wellness. So in my presentation, I presented three common threats to clinical practice and professional wellness. And these three threats are compassion fatigue, vicarious traumatization, and burnout. Although the professional literature has recognized these threats to well-being of professionals in medicine, behavioral health, and other professions for several decades, the global pandemic beginning at the end of 2019 has brought these threats into our collective awareness. Why do I say this? Since the early months of 2020, the global pandemic has resulted in the following outcomes that intersect with the work that behavioral health professionals specialize in. These outcomes are social isolation and the subsequent cases of depression, anxiety, suicide, substance use disorder of millions, if not billions of people around the world as a result of the policies, laws, regulations, enforcing physical distancing and quarantine protocols. 
Second outcome, loss of lives, and the subsequent cases of grief, prolonged grief, complex grief, etc., of millions of people around the world. Third outcome, financial and relationship stress caused by lockdowns, remote and homeschooling, unemployment, evictions, rent and mortgage forbearances. Fourth outcome, increases in child abuse, intimate partner violence, and elder abuse. Fifth outcome, increased traumatic responses, both primary and vicarious, to police, police brutality and calls for racial justice in the policing and criminal justice systems. So what does our ethical standards, principles, and values as mental health and behavioral health professionals have anything to do with the global pandemic? The global pandemic has put the importance of our work as behavioral health or mental health professionals at the forefront of our society. I really believe that this is a silver lining of the pandemic. Don't get me wrong. I would never wish for anything like what we've experienced from the pandemic to ever happen again. But we can all agree that the demand for our collective services has gone through the roof. And with more work than we know what to do with, we must stay ever vigilant against the threats of compassion fatigue, vicarious trauma, and burnout. I think it's important for all of us to guard ourselves from these threats by being intentional in operating from our professional ethics, values, principles, and standards. We must not let our good intentions of wanting to help others or economic demands of maximizing our caseloads, if we have control over our caseloads, interfere with our own wellness or with the wellness of our clients. My philosophy is a preventative one. As licensed mental health professionals, we need to do everything in our power to take care of ourselves. We need to do this with intentionality, discipline, and commitment. This is really what this channel and ultimately my book forthcoming book is about. When we make self-care an intentional practice, we are more likely to prevent impairment, including burnout, compassion fatigue, and vicarious traumatization, as well as ethical and legal threats to our clinical practice. So here's my challenge for all of you this week. Please review your professional code of ethics and check in with yourself and ask yourself, Am I doing everything in my power to take care of myself and to prevent impairment, which can include burnout, vicarious traumatization, and compassion fatigue? Lastly, make a commitment to yourself to actively implement any or all of the self-care tools that we've talked about in previous episodes. Lastly, I would like to thank all of you for watching this video. To all those LCSWs and licensed mental health clinicians, thank you for the work that you do every day for your clients, for your agency, and for the profession. Please continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Bye for now.